Yo guys, it's Hax here. Today I'm bringing you a video on the Modern Combat 5 update. We'll be covering the Commander class, which is actually quite an interesting class from the time I've played with it so far. It, it does have potential, however there are some things that would need to be changed in the future. To be honest, when I first actually played this class, like I was extremely thinking of uh, Tom Clancy's The Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, just because the way that this class works out. So yes, you have a shield. Yes, there are some abilities that might have been inspired from that game. Uh, like the interrogation and like the armor kit. But overall, the addition of this class is actually quite useful. Anyways, we're going to be going over all that stuff in the update right now. Starting off with the perk tree of the game. Alright, first perk of them all is the Shield Rush. Now the Shield Rush can be used for two things, uh, either mobility or damage. Uh, for the damage, it's not really too consistent because like when I actually try to hit a player with the shield to do that shield damage to them, uh, the bash is not very successful. Like it, it's very, very inconsistent. You'll miss the bash a lot or it just the damage doesn't register to the player. So that might be something they would need to fix in the update. But the other thing it does give you is the mobility, and the mobility is actually quite nice. You can actually run around, escape from grenades, and even get up close and personal to players to do the interrogation, which is the next perk. Now for interrogation, it is pretty self-explanatory. You get up to an enemy player, you knife them, all their friends show on the minimap, and you're good and dandy. The downside to the perk so far, however, is that... Knifing is very, very inconsistent with this class. I will find that you get knifed more than you actually can knife the enemy players. It's kind of like that they have this one class with reduced knife range or something. It, even when you're like in the player, you cannot actually knife them. It's very, very hard to actually hit. Uh, so maybe that will be something else they will fix in a future update. Next perk we have are the Ballistic Plates. So pretty much the ballistic plates are armor packs you could throw to yourself or teammates that increase your max HP. So for level 1 it increases your max HP by 25 and by level 2 it increases it by 50 which is actually quite a large amount. Now these are useful if you're like going to be in a gunfight with an enemy team. Uh, just getting an extra bonus HP that might help you survive the situation. As you see I was able to actually survive a grenade uh, from the extra 25 HP I got right there so I was quite lucky. One criticism though I have of these armor packs is the fact that you don't really get benefited from giving them to your team. Now for like the support class, if you put down your health kit, you'll get some team healing bonus XP. But for this class, when you give your teammate armor packs, it's like, hey, you gave them armor, cool. You don't really get anything for it. Uh, so one thing they could do is maybe give you like a bonus, uh, bonus XP for at least supplying your armor to teammates. And it would give people a reason to do it more often. Now this class has some weapon pickup counters uh, with this perk called Field Repair. Uh, kind of like the Sapper or like the Bounty Hunter, you can't actually pick up weapons. Uh, instead, when you pick up weapons with this perk, it actually restores HP of your shield. So let's say if your, your shield's badly damaged or if your shield was destroyed, and you walk over a gun on the ground, that gun will instantly restore some HP of your shield. Next perk we have is Ricochet. Now, pretty self-explanatory, if an enemy is shooting at you, the bullets have a chance of bouncing back. Now, the thing is, this perk is kind of underwhelming. Yes, it has a 25% chance, it's one in every four bullets. However, I don't really see the results of this. Uh, when people are shooting at me, they're using SMGs, they're using, you know, rapid fire guns. I would assume they would have taken damage, or at least let me know that they're taking damage from their own bullets. Uh, you don't get any assists from damage that they reflect onto themselves, uh, so that could be one change that they make in the future. The final two perks of the class are Reconstruction, which pretty much just makes it so you regenerate your shield a bit faster, and Bullet Sponge, which is the team perk. Bullet Sponge, it reduces the team damage, uh, or at least the team damage of players around you by 5%, so you know that might be a RPG that you survived or something. Anyways, that pretty much wraps it up for the perk, so let us move on to the weapons themselves. Yes, guys, this is a long, comprehensive video. We are going to continue on. Now getting into the weapons, the most important thing of them all. 
Now the way I did this, or at least the way I was playing with these weapons, is I had the tier 1 weapon and then the tier 1 shield, and the tier 2 weapon, tier 2 shield, just so it was kind of coordinated together uh, in each gameplay. Starting off with the tier 1 weapon, the DBHG pistol, and the PK link shield. Now my thoughts about this weapon itself, it could be a bit better, but then again it's also a tier 1 weapon. I often found myself not actually getting a lot of kills, more so getting assists, and the total damage you actually get with this pistol shot, uh, assuming they don't have actual you know, armor on like Paragon or have extra HP, you can maybe do 15 to 20 damage per shot. And with the accuracy this thing has by default, that can be quite hard to hit. Personally, one thing I would like seeing with this weapon is if they increase the damage a bit, or if they at least boosted the accuracy. I've, as you see here in the video, I was using a suppressor with it because using it with the suppressor makes it so much better because you know you actually get hit bullets, unlike this standard one. So uh, if they ever do change a tier one weapon or buff a tier one weapon, please buff this one. Give it some some love, game loft. You guys thought I was just talking about the pistol hold. Well, that's where you're wrong. We're also talking about the shield, the PK Link shield. If you have any other shield than the tier one shield, use those other shields because this tier one shield is horrible in terms of damage reduction. It's horrible in terms of mobility. It's a tier one shield. So try using something else. For the tier 2, we have the 6MG and we have the Lex 78. Now, the Lex 78 is actually a lot more enjoyable to use than the, uh, the PK Link as a shield, but the 6MG, uh, it, it might as well be a pea shooter. The, the amount of hit markers you get with this gun is ridiculous. And keep in mind, guys, I was using the armor core that increases your armor penetration by 4. And it, it's a pea shooter. It does barely any damage you have to get headshots it's kind of like the saber but maybe worse now yes i didn't really give it fair justice i wasn't using the max attachment but still the max attachment wouldn't increase the damage that much it would still take quite a few bullets to kill each player moving on to the tier 3 we have the xssg shotgun and the m8 palisade now the shotgun's actually where the class starts getting a bit more useful because you know you actually have a solid amount of damage you could do to enemy players. The shotgun actually is quite easy to use as well. It's not fully automatic like some people may like, but if you it does tap relatively quickly and it, it, as long as you do land your shots, uh, it's quite a strong gun. Now the Palisade Shield, uh, it's a very very tanky shield compared to all the other shields so far. The downside to it is the mobility is incredibly slow when you're moving around with this thing you will feel a noticeable difference from the tier one or the tier two when you pull this thing out once you pull this thing out it it makes you a slug you could barely move and also the time it takes for it to get pulled out is quite long quite longer than the uh, the other ones at least moving on once again to tier four we have the micro cov and the Riot RD. Now, these two weapons together, I, I don't know if they should really be paired together. Um, the, the Micro COV, you know, I'm, I'm not really giving it justice again because I was using default attachments, uh, but it, it's quite weak. It's another one of those hit marker guns. It's not as bad as the Mark II, but uh, it, it's still quite hard to actually uh, do some damage with it. Uh, yes, it is a lot easier to get kills than the Tier two but it's still relatively lacking in terms of firepower. Now for the Riot RD, this shield's actually where the shields start getting a lot more useful. Now this has the mobility and it has the durability. Pretty much this shield is quite tanky. It'll take a lot of shots. It'll also repair itself relatively quickly. Uh, so it's actually a pretty good shield if you don't have anything crazy like, you know, tier 5 or up. Talking about tier 5, we have the COMAH-11 and the Mobile KV. Now these weapons are actually quite good. So good that I'm actually using the tier 5 weapon as a primary weapon for this class right now because it's actually incredibly fun 
to use because of the quirk it has. Now for the weapon itself, if you're moving around, the accuracy is not too good. But if you stand still and you don't move, it's almost like you have aim down sights accuracy with it, which is incredibly useful, especially if you are a guy with a shield. Not moving makes it a lot easier for you to aim. That better accuracy makes it so you're not really aiming down sights and exposing yourself. Uh, so that's the thumbs up from Haxer for the tier 5 uh, SMG. Now for the shield itself, the shield itself is also quite good. Uh, the shield does give you the ability to actually tank more shots. It also does give you slightly more mobility, so it's not like you're kind of getting locked down uh, because you're slow. It, it gives you the speed as well. So both the tier 5 SMG and shield are quite good. Moving on to the tier 6 weapon and shield, we have the Severance Shotgun and the M12 Stockade. The Severance Shotgun is a fully automatic shotgun, kind of like the Searing 9 or the DBS-4, except for it has quite a few bullets in each mag. Uh, this gun also does qu pack quite a punch, it does quite a decent amount of damage as well. Uh, so I would see a lot of people actually using this in the future. One thing I do see people using a lot, especially for like clan battles or maybe the ESL in the future, would be the M12 Stockade Shield. Now, the ability for the shield is it scans like every few seconds for enemies on the minimap and it displays everyone on the minimap. You don't have to activate any of the ability, it will just be like, yo, you want to know where the enemies are? Bam, you know where the enemies are now. So it, it will be very, very useful for giving information to your team, uh, it, especially if you're, like I said, you're doing any clan battles, squad battles, uh, that kind of stuff. Almost done with all these, we have the Tier 7 weapons. We have the HCB Dog Revolver, and we have the Impact 21B Shield. Now the HCB Dog Revolver is a two-shot kill revolver, and this is without it being upgraded any bit at all. So it's actually quite strong. Uh, one flaw it does struggle with, though, is when you aim down sights, sometimes the uh, the aim at least glitches out for me. Uh, so not maybe not everyone has this problem, but it is reoccurring. Uh, so that is one thing to keep in mind. But other than that one flaw, it's it's quite a solid weapon. Just make sure you are landing those shots. Uh, make sure you're not really just spamming it. Just try to aim, and it, it's quite a strong gun. For the shield, it goes the same. The shield is quite strong as well. Uh, unlike the tier 6, it doesn't have any special abilities to it, but it, it can tank quite a bit of damage, and you will see yourself surviving a bit longer with it out. And finally guys, the moment you have all been waiting for, the prestige weapons. For the prestige gun, we have the ST2XL, and we have the M15 Bulwark. Since these guns are prestige weapons, you pretty much expect them to be good, and they are quite good. The gun itself does a pretty good amount of damage. The fact that it ignores armor it really does cut back on difficulties that some of the previous guns did have. Also, the damage it has is quite satisfactory as well. I, I see myself using it with a suppressor on just because it makes it getting headshots a lot easier and just picking up kills a lot easier because you get that better accuracy. For the shield, the shield pretty much makes you a juggernaut. It absorbs so many bullets and the thing is it, it doesn't actually represent the, uh, the mobility it actually gives you. This shield actually makes you quite quick compared to the tier 1 shield, even though it's supposed to have less mobility. Uh, so maybe that is a bug they will need to fix in the future, but this shield pretty much just makes you a walking tank. Uh, it can break, yes, it is still possible to break this shield, but this thing can take 5-6 to six vice shots before shattering. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed that video, that was all of the perks, that was all the weapons of the Commander class. If you did watch up to this point, I'll give you a tip, use the anti-knife perk, it will save your life multiple times. Uh, when people usually see this class, at least when I was trying it out at first, it would have a lot of people just rush at you, just trying to knife you, because they have more knife range than you. That's one of the things I was mentioning earlier when they, uh, I was talking about the... Uh, the interrogation perk. People can knife you from further away than you can actually knife them. Uh, so if you have that anti-knife perk on, it will save you a lot of trouble. 
Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do leave me feedback in the comments down below. I might have some more Modern Combat gameplay up because this class is actually kind of kind of fun to use, to be honest, in my in my personal opinion. I give the class a, a thumbs up, at least tier 5 and above. But tier 5 and above takes a while to get. Anyways, that is it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is Hacks, and I'll see you next time. Peace.